Hi, my name is Kristen and today we are going to be installing trim on our base cabinets. I've never done this before so I'm a little nervous but really excited. It's been something that we've been planning for a long time and we're excited to take you with us. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the base molding along all of the cabinets along the peninsula that we hadn't already done. The reason that we waited for this is that we wanted to have a good idea of what the design was that we were going to do and we didn't have a real sense of that when the rest of the molding was going in. So now that we have our design in place, we have our plan, we're gonna go ahead, install that molding, and we're gonna get started. This is our first time doing it, so you're gonna be following right along with us, and we're gonna show you how we did it. And this is where we're starting today. This is essentially the idea for what we're going for with the cabinets. We were going to do more of a board and batten look so that it really reflected on the shaker cabinets that we have throughout the rest of the kitchen. That didn't really work out for our plan. We just couldn't get it to look right, especially with the corner piece. So we scrapped that idea, and now we're gonna be moving on to trim molding. We're going to be using this molding right here to actually make the boxes. But the very first step that we have to do is go ahead and install that base molding. We have the base molding right here ready to go. Kevin will be making those cuts because I am terrible at cutting base molding. I have messed up every single piece that I've ever cut. So we are down to our very last couple of pieces. I don't trust myself to do it. And so Kevin's gonna step in, he's gonna make those cuts, and then we're gonna move on with the project and I'm gonna handle it out from there. The first thing Kevin did was measure the molding against the cabinet to determine where he needed to cut. First, he drew a line where the cabinet ended, and then he drew a second line on a 45 degree angle to determine where the cut would have to be. The goal is for the shortest part of the molding to end at the cabinet. So the big difference between the rest of the molding that we're going to be doing today and this base molding is rather than cutting it on the angle like we did for the, the windows, which was like an angle like this, this angle, this whole blade is going to shift like you just saw Kevin do. So the angle is going to go this way, or I guess that way, um, which is why I'm so bad at it. So we put the tape around it just because we've had issues with it splintering in the past. So this way it just kind of protects everything so this top coat doesn't get damaged when he does the cut. Once we had the first piece, it was smooth sailing working our way around the cabinet. Goodbye. And by our way around the cabinet, I mean Kevin. We made sure all the pieces fit and then Kevin went back to work and I got down to business. Okay, so for this part, I'm gonna start nailing in the molding. I've got my nail gun ready, it's all plugged in. But what I have to do first is level everything out. So I have this shim. The shim is gonna be used to help in this back corner. The corner goes in a little bit, so we're just gonna use the very, very skinny part of this shim to just kind of stick it behind there, and that way um, the pieces in the corner will line up correctly. Now that the shim is in place, I got to work nailing in that molding. For this part, I used 18 gauge, one and a half inch nails, which will leave only a small mark. The last piece of cabinet molding that needed to go in was the corner trim. I'll spare you according to attempt number one where I cut the trim an inch too short and just get to the good stuff. So the plan now is to cut down all of these boards. I've cut two boards so far just to kind of see. We'll go dry fit them and make sure that they fit. And then we can just kind of rip through all of these and hopefully get that all done today. Now that I know that the boards are the right size, I did a bolt cut, trimming down everything I needed at once. I set the stop block on the saw stand, which allowed me to cut all of the pieces without measuring everyone individually. 
I laid them all out to make sure everything looked good, and then it was time for paint. We took a small piece of the trim to Home Depot and got it color matched to make sure that we had the correct color, and it was perfect. The trickiest part about painting was making sure that I caught all the drips. If you have a paint sprayer, I would use that. It probably would have made this process go a lot smoother. All right, well that's the end of day one, so now I'm gonna let this paint dry and then tomorrow morning we'll get up, we'll do another coat, and then we can get installing. Honestly, day two was a lot more challenging. I thought we could easily put the boards up, but we know by now nothing is as easy as it seems. Unfortunately for us, this floor is not totally even, which means that we had to be very strategic about the boxes being level and it being parallel to the base molding. We used a wood divider to make sure the squares are evenly spaced and multiple levels to make sure everything was even. It was a long night, but eventually together, we did get it done. Then day three was simply filling holes with wood filler and touching up with paint. Don't you love it? It looks so good and it goes perfectly with this kitchen. I'm so glad we did this. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more on this channel. We'll see you guys next time.